Hey, I'm Susanna Lanier, actor and acting coach for over 25 years. I'm Jess Greenberg, casting director for over 10 years. We're here to help you navigate this crazy, creative, and sometimes chaotic journey into the film and television world. We share our insights as to what works. And invite some pretty spectacular guests to share more ideas to move you on your journey. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our mini-sode. Hi. Hello. Hello. (laughs) So today we're going to be discussing the upcoming episode we have with Erica Deutschman and Katie Breyer, and it's a great episode. They are uh, successful actors, and they are also successful writing partners, and they have sold now 11 screenplays and they're going to tell you how they did it. But the the funny thing was, is the conversation became a little bit like it was very easy. And when Katie had said, yeah, the first year I went to Toronto was, it was remarkably easy. I <laughs> went in and I, I booked very quickly. She goes, but the second year after I went through three years of drought and stress and it was hard and questioning. And so we sort of omitted that from the episode. (laughs) So, because I had, I had said to them, like everybody else we, we talked to went to Toronto and found it really difficult. Regardless, they didn't write at the beginning, but they have had difficult periods and acting droughts Mm -hmm. um, throughout their, you know, I guess they've been there 10 years now. So just to let you know, even though sometimes things look easy on the outset, it's not easy. It wasn't an overnight, uh, no problem. I don't think anybody has that experience. So Jess, yeah. What did you uh, think about our conversation off air after? Yeah. I mean, it's always important to point out they're like, oh shit. Like looking back at the conversation, I think everything may sound like it was so easy and it wasn't, but I also appreciate in a way, I appreciate that too, because it's just, that's what they're choosing to focus on. (laughs) Right, right. And it's like, yeah, shit was hard. We, you know, to sell 11 scripts, me and you were even talking like how many concepts you actually have to come up with to sell 11. Yeah. It could be dozens, right? So all these, oh, yeah, I was going to say there are hundreds. I don't know, but they did say yeah. it wasn't like they wrote a concept and passed it in and said, Hey, let's make a movie. Yeah. They did have to pitch a bunch of concepts yes. and then the production house liked their concepts. Mm-hmm. Right. And at the beginning, and I think this was off the air too, when Erica said they wrote their first script thinking it was exactly what uh, they, they they were looking for, the romantic comedy genre. And then they tried to uh, pitch it and it was like, yeah, we're not doing these types of scripts anymore. So they're mm-hmm. like, okay. And then they learned not to write entire scripts, but they came up with one concept after the other so yeah. they could come with a big amount of stuff. And She also said that she tried to get someone, a director of a film she was working on to, you know, help her. And they sort of directed her in a way, make a poster to go with it. And so she (laughs) was asking her contacts, but they were, they were directing her in a way that didn't feel right. And it also didn't feel like she was going to make a lot of movement that way. So there was a search to find the right person who introduced them to the right person Exactly. who first rejected their first script. Yeah. And and then they came with a bunch of concepts. Mm-hmm. So that's what they want also to be, you know, clear that it wasn't yeah. just, here you go, let's, exactly. let's go. Like it took, it took work. Yeah. And, and I think it's also funny. I find there's always like through lines with like our episodes. We were just talking about Holly Gautier, like in her episode, she said like, there's no such thing as overnight success, you know, right. like, you see someone getting a bit of traction or fame and you're like, oh, wow. Like they just overnight success. It's like, no, 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 no. We have been working at this for a long time and I'm only now getting recognized for it. And so although Katie and, and Erica are not writers they haven't been writing for years but they have been in this industry for years years being actors and like being uh surrounded by a lot of scripts like we spoke with Richard also yeah you start to understand formulas and what's needed and this and that and so again just to remind there's endless possibilities and opportunity of like if you just like zero in on oh 
I could do that. Like, they, yeah, you know, I could and, do that. Yeah. And I wanted to say, and also don't be too precious about it. Like I was talking to somebody else after an, another act and they're like, oh, I, I, we were starting to try to write one of these rom-coms and, uh, but then we kind of, you know, let it slide and maybe we'll get back into it. This 11 a script is very um, inspirational. And I was like, yeah, but don't be too precious about it. Like it's probably your first one's not going to be your masterpiece and mm -hmm. you might not sell it. Not saying let things go and just make it bad. Just say, I'm just going to throw bad stuff. No, do your work, do good work, obviously. Yeah. But I think Canadians or people who I've been surrounded with anyways, we want to do, we think we're going to get that one script and pitch it and it's going to go. And it's like, it's never that one script. You have to have like those guys did just create one concept after the other. It's like throwing spaghetti at the wall, seeing what sticks, yeah. but don't stop throwing the spaghetti. You got to keep throwing it and keep throwing it and keep throwing it. And some, some will stick, yeah. some won't. Yeah. That's kind of more of the attitude. It feels like quality for sure, but volume almost more than quality, <laughs> like yeah. you gotta, quality too. I don't want to say that, but you got to keep kind of at it. So and that's, I think, also, a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. To add to two things. One is what they're doing now is it's commission, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, so it depends on what you want. They're getting commissioned to write scripts for companies and, yeah. and they've sort of, and the important thing too is they enjoy working together and writing mm -hmm. together and they, they've realized this chemistry that they have and the flow that they get into and which is great too because some I mean there's some creative writers that just want to tell their stories and their you know and right. I think they they have those goals and dreams but it's like this is also something that will help them get there they're learning more about writing and scripts and the process of it all and navigating that to then be able to do maybe some of their own projects. And yeah, I don't know if I ever talked about it here, but I actually, I pitched to Netflix and CBC before. Oh, I didn't know it, that. Yeah. And it, and it is such a process and did get rejected. <laughs> right. But did you have one idea that was your baby or did you come up as like, I'm going to throw tons of stuff at you until you say no. yes. It was one idea <laughs> and it was a friend of mine who we've worked in the industry together. We actually met years ago at Lululemon and we're both in film and TV. And I would tell her I had a condo and I would tell her about the condo administration right. and like how it was always just like bananas, like just like a group of really random people together <laughs> having to make decisions. And so we wrote like a, a concept about like literally just that the condo association That's and so all the funny. different characters and different backgrounds and way of living and but yet we all had to make these like decisions and like um just some hilarious stories and so she was uh her and her partner had a documentary with CBC so they had got us a meeting to pitch this comedy series yeah and then they're like, yeah, well, maybe like we would like to see like a demo. And we're like, oh, it's so fun. Like what? You know, and like, yeah, it's like, OK, cool. Like it's probably not going to happen. But then we took that concept and then Netflix had like the, the whole looking for like development stuff. And it was during the pandemic. And that's when we really like we wrote out a whole pilot script wow. um, from that concept. So that still exists. And, you know, and then life happens and it was not found like writing dialogue is really hard. <laughs> Right. You and know, that's like, exactly what Erica and Katie said for them. It wasn't because yeah. that's, that was how they are like can improvise it while they're writing together and they get yeah, it, how exactly. people talk. And that's what they said. Writers, a lot of writers don't know how actors talk. So they mm -hmm. feel actors, you know, are a good candidate for writers as, as mm -hmm. script writers, because yeah. they have a little bit more uh, understanding there. Yeah. I, I, I believe it. Cause even like, yeah, with improv or trying to tap into a different character. It's like, okay, I'm writing as myself thinking of this other character. Like, I really think that actors are great writers because, yeah, they know how to tap into those. Like <laughs> Some do, some don't probably. Yeah, I guess. Probably, I like make that generalization. Yeah, yeah. But, but I could see how they are great writers because, well, I mean, they're also hilarious. They're so funny. 
Erica and Katie. Yeah. Oh, they were so, so funny. And the way they yeah. work off each other, you could just see, like, I can see them in their own sitcom as two writers, like, you know, yeah. aspiring young writers, roommates, like they're not roommates, by the way, but I could see that yeah. for them, you know, they were yeah, at was, one point. <laughs> yeah, they were at one point. So yeah, it was great. It was great. And Jess, thank you. We didn't know that you were also a uh, potential series creator. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, I mean, that is one of the goals, right? Is the comedy series uh, yeah. takes place in Montreal. So maybe I'll end up writing and producing it too and casting it. Um, yeah. But no, I actually don't want to write it. I didn't love the process of writing. Okay. Um, creating though you loved. Creating. Yeah. Creating. I love, I, yeah, I think I'm, Someone once told me I'm like an idea generator. Oh, good. I have, I have problems executing. That's my thing. But I am an idea generator. I always have ideas. And it's just like, yeah, bringing it to fruition is my struggle. <laughs> yeah, I think the next think time people, but... you have to have a lot of ideas. I think that's the thing until something kind of captures them. Yeah. So great. So yeah, well, anyway, lots of takeaways from that one. It was a really fun episode. I thought it was a fun discussion and uh, I think everyone will like it. Yeah. So everyone, we will see you on Thursday and you are going to hear their very uplifting story. Um, and it, it's really great and how they sold all those screenplays and how they work together and how they got started. I'll give you a hint meeting in my class and <laughs> <laughs> um yeah. yeah when they were like 14 and 16 literally when they're children when I used to give a teen class so that's that's a lot of fun and and it was so great to see them and I'm you know having known them when they were kids literally kids it's crazy to see them now in their 30s and so successful yeah, yeah so successful and I never uh was a big fan of the boys, uh, the Amazon prime show, because it was very violent. I, it is a great show, but it was very violent, but somehow I think I'm okay with violence right now. Cause I, I wanted <laughs> to see it cause I wanted to see Katie's work and, um, man, she was good and it was fun. And it is a great show if you can stomach violence because it is a really, really good show, but there's a yeah. lot of, um, blood and guts and stuff, but it's really good. <laughs> Cool. So that's it. Or you could and, check out Erica in the Hallmark. She's well, that's well, you're absolutely so whatever right. Whatever you or, like. So yes, or you could check out Erica, who also has had a lead in a Hallmark movie and plays in lots of romantic comedies. And they also their writing it has eleven romantic comedies out there. So mm -hmm. definitely, if you're not into all the blood and guts, that's another thing you can check out. Yes. Awesome, everybody. But first, check us out on Thursday for the episode because I think you're <laughs> going to enjoy it. Bye. Thank you. Bye. If you're enjoying this podcast, we would really appreciate it if you could take a moment to support us. Leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. You can share this podcast with your friends and colleagues and follow us on social media at Book the Room Podcast. We put out episodes weekly, so subscribe to the shows to get notified.